And that's a good question, because maybe you're here and you're not too sure what a dedication Sunday is. It's really in the Word. It's an opportunity for parents to dedicate their little one to the Lord himself. To say, Lord, this is a gift from you, and we want to raise them in such a way that honours you, and that they would know you, that their little heart would open up to the great big love of God. And so this morning, we are really privileged to have Sam and Megan Rogers, part of our church family, who are going to come and dedicate Amber, and I think Amos might join us as well, aka Spider-Man, but don't break his cover. <laughs> so if you just want to uh, just put your hands together and just welcome the family as they come just now. <laughs> Grab you, man. Is that, is that Spider-Man in the back, is yeah, it? Of course, of course it is. Of course it is. Um, and so folks, as, as we said, um, this is an opportunity for Sam and Megan before the Lord and before their family, their friends, and their church family. And a special welcome to all their family and friends today. Again, we hope that you feel at home with us as they place Amber before the Lord and say, Lord, would you bless her and would you keep her in your arms? And so just now, folks, um, before we do that, I think it would be nice. Um, we're going to do a reading and then we're going to hear a wee bit about what Amber's name means. Because often parents will name a child, just like in Bible times, really, really, she's getting a wave, really, really intentionally. Either that or she's a Pentecostal, just giving it, you know, just, you know. We welcome Sam and Megan, Amos and Amber. And in this moment of dedication, we are to give thanks to God, the maker of all things, the giver of life for the birth of Amber. The parents are here to make a promise that, will, that they will endeavor to bring this child in the discipline and instructions of the Lord, relying on God's help in our work together. We are to pray that God's blessing may descend and rest upon this child, remembering how the Lord Jesus took children into his arms and blessed them laying his hands upon them and as it says in matthew 18 jesus says and whoever comes welcomes me oh, sorry and whoever welcomes a little child like this in my name welcomes me see that you do not look down on one of these little ones for i tell you that there are angels in heaven always see the face of my father in heaven in the same way your father in heaven is not willing that any of these little ones should be lost. And so just before as a church, we pray over Sam, Megan, Amos, and Amber. Um, Megan, do you want to let us know a little bit about Amber's name and what it means? Yeah. Um, well, so we're really believing in the power of our really to believe about scripture that says that your words speak life and death. And when it comes to your name, we believe that every time you call your child by name, you're speaking something over their life. Yeah. So when it came to Nina, this girl, and um, we really sought God, and we he thought he wanted her to be, and he had planned for her to be, and I know a lot of you are probably thinking ever should have been the name, which, yeah, it is. Um, but the image of an ember to us is quite significant. An ember is the last little spark of the flame that's left at the end of the fire. And it looks like quite a sad thing, but actually it only takes one ember spark a whole fire. Mm. And our prayer would be that God would use this girl and the fiery nature of these things we've given her to um, break into the lives of those around her. Her middle name, Margaret, is very special to us. Um, she's named after both her granny and her great granny. Um, these are women that she will never meet this side of heaven, but yes, <laughs> um, but we really pray that she would walk in their legacy, the women that led with a humble manner, without ever having a platform, women who were devoted and faithful to God, and who really were used by him to impact people around him, and that's what we want for her. But Margaret also means pearl, and a pearl is a symbol of purity and of beauty. And so that us, her name symbolizes beauty for matches, and that amazing thing that God does when he gets hold of your heart, and he sees all of those actions. And so that's our prayer, as always, well you turn to be part of this plan and live your own lives and to really turn your lives from ashes into beauty. Yeah, beautiful. Isn't that beautiful? What a beautiful meaning. Go on ahead. And, uh, 
And, and what, a, what a significant meaning that God is the God who turns beauty from ashes. Isn't that a message in and of itself this morning? And I love how uh, the name Margaret from grandparents is in there too. And that actually the story of your family and the spiritual heritage and legacy of your family lives on in and through Amber as well, which is so beautiful. Now, we'll try the hold. We tried it the other week and it didn't go so well. So we'll give it a wee go. If I maybe stand next to your mummy, that might be close enough. So far, so good. Okay. Church, what I'm going to ask you to do is to stand too. Would you stand with me? So in just a moment, um, Sam and uh, Megan are going to make their promise before ourselves and before the Lord. Um, And then we're going to pray. And that prayer is significant, church, because as the saying goes, it takes a village to raise a child. And actually, as the church, we have a responsibility to every child and young person in this house that we would do all we can to support and to pray for our young parents and that we would do all that we can in our serving, in our giving and in our example to see a young generation thrive in God's house, that they would run farther and faster and stronger than we ever did. Amen. Amen. Okay. Sam and Megan, in presenting this child to the Lord, do you promise, in dependence of divine grace and in partnership with the church, to teach Amber the truths and the duties of the Christian faith, and by prayer, teaching, and example, to being her, to bringing her up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord? If so, please say, I do. And so church again, a reminder of our responsibility as we pray and as we pray over Sam and Megan. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, just as we hold Amber in our arms, Lord, we pray that your hand would rest upon her all of her life. That Lord, her little heart would open up to a great big God who gave his life for her and who loves her. Lord, we pray that the meaning of her name would become such a great reality in her wee life. That, Lord, she would really be an ember among the ashes. That her faith and her love for you would set ablaze her friends, her family, and her generation. Lord, we speak over her what the Apostle Paul said over King David. May she achieve everything you have called her to do in her generation and so lord today we pray for megan and for sam and for big brother amos that lord you would bless them abundantly that lord you would put a hedge of protection around them that lord in the valleys and in the difficult moments they would feel the support of your peace and of your presence and lord in the hilltop moments when life is going well it would all turn back to an offering of praise to you Lord Jesus, Lord, this morning we look to you as our Father in heaven. And Lord, would you put your hand on your sons and your daughters this morning in such a way that we would be overwhelmed by your presence and by your grace. And Lord, once again for Amber, we thank you for the spiritual legacy that is on her life. To all of those who have gone before her and to those who have joined the great cloud of witnesses who are cheering her on in this moment. So Lord, would you bless her and would your presence and your peace rest on her in abundance. And in Jesus' name, all God's people said, Amen. Now we read the blessing over you, Amber. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace.